This is the working part, as you all know, and I like to take off my jacket because we get to move a little bit around this podium. Um, let me start, if I could have my slides, please. Um, when we started back in Toronto, we called it a new season. I have learned now, uh, through working with all of you, that it's really our season now. It's really our season. Um, and during this season that I think is about to, is, is, is we're in the middle of, and I think it's a beginning of a season that will last probably from now until uh, we get to Buenos Aires. Uh, we are going into a phase uh, of, I need my clicker, please. I need my clicker. Yeah. Uh, we're going to go into a phase where we need to focus on the foundations of ICANN, on the enablement of ICANN. Uh, right now, we uh, believe that ICANN uh, needs enablement at the process level, at the people level, and certainly uh, at the systems level. And we've been working on that. During this enablement season, as I shared with you in uh, Toronto, we will get the ground ready for the growth to come after that. And we have done some very good things in the last six months. So let me walk you through some of the enablement we have done. Let's start with our goals and objectives. This is the slide I showed you in Toronto, where I told you these are our four key objectives. And under them, we outlined 16 goals. This was at the beginning of our journey together. We then committed to you that we will take all of these and translate them into a series of portfolios, programs, and projects that start taking everything we do at ICANN and putting it into a system. We have done that. And the work has led to 56 portfolios, 116 programs, and nearly 500 different projects occurring into ICANN. All of this was designed and structured into a new system. Now, if you go today to the site called myican.org, you will have for the first time visibility into that system. Let me show you. So if you go to the site today, you will see the same objectives, goals, portfolios, and programs. You can go to down and look at each of them. You will see the status of the various components of that. You'll know what's at risk, what's in trouble. If you go into each of these areas, you'll see the owners. And this is the exact status of what's happening inside of ICANN in real time. So if we, for example, look at Akram's area, he seems to have a lot of things in trouble. You'll be getting some calls, Akram. But if you look into, for example, his IANA operations, in real time, it shows you the projects under that, the status of these projects. Uh, you'll get, if you want information about Elise's business excellence initiative, you can go into that. You'll find out its timeline. You'll find out the details behind it. And this is just the beginning. We're going to give you visibility because that's your work. It's your projects. You need to know what's happening inside ICANN in real time. We did the same thing on compliance. Until today, getting data on our compliance is not always easy. If I want to see, for example, how many complaints are now in the system per notification cycle in real time, you'll see that data. And this is across the board for all of the areas of this department. This is new. And this is not just slides. This is actually linked to the applications we've built in the last six months and moved all of our work into them and manage all of our work, all of your work, in a way that is structured, that is trackable, so that we can all succeed together. I want to give thanks to the incredible work that our team has put to make that happen. It was a collective effort. Every function in ICANN is in the My Projects section. 
everything we do, including refilling the coffee in our coffee machines. Everything is in there. And now we're tying the budget and we're tying the HR system at the systemic level into this. So now we don't even need to ask someone what are his goals or her goals for the next quarter. It will be picked out of the system and it will be in the HR system and that's how we will work. Everything is now aligned inside ICANN from a structural and system standpoint. Now since we have so many people, I'll take the chance to remind you what is my ICANN. My ICANN is the tool we introduced uh, in uh, Toronto that allows you to go look at topics uh, by uh, topic and get information. Everything happening across all of the ICANN world is inside this area. You can look at calendars so you can track everything going on at ICANN in real time and you can transfer these calendars into your own calendar. So these are important advances in the way we display and we share information with you. And we hope many of you use it. And by the way, we have now thousands of registered users on my ICANN because you could register and then get alerts real time into your inbox. Um, just before I leave this page, I want to share with you that uh, because we're moving very fast, at the moment, this project's view is giving you a view uh, that is cut on a monthly basis, on the first of the month. By Durban, it will become real time. Okay? So by Durban, when you go into that system, you will be real time seeing what we're doing uh, at that moment. And it will stay this way moving forward. Back to the slides if I could. So what this does is it gives us the three things we committed to do in Toronto. It gives us agility because we now can see things and be able to adjust them as we go. It certainly gives us accountability. I open every meeting at ICANN by looking into this data. And all of our leaders and executives start their meetings by looking at that data. This is how we manage ICANN. This is where it starts. This is how we keep things on track. This is what we promised you and we're moving forward with it. Of course, visibility is critical. We agreed with you that we are all one community. I have learned this over the last six months. ICANN is not the staff. We are ICANN. So you have to see what we see and help us improve. Full visibility to everything we do. The next thing we talked about, if you recall, is the changing of the structure, of the posture of ICANN from a presence and functional standpoint. This is the graph I showed you in Toronto. And we talked about looking at global responsibilities and local responsibilities. We have refined that model since then, and it now looks a little bit like this. What we've discovered is that a lot of our global functions, instead of dividing them locally across the world, we will divide them across these three hubs I mentioned to you. So these will be distributed. Our legal department will be partly in Los Angeles, partly in Singapore, partly in Istanbul. Our compliance department will be distributed. We are putting a very difficult freeze as best we can on hiring in LA so that we can start shifting our posture and our presence to the other hubs as fast as we can. So I want to be clear, these hubs are not what you'd call typical engagement centers or offices. These hubs are ICANN's core. Every department will be distributed across these hubs, and as I said, many of our leaders will also move to these hubs. Now, Sally, our head of stakeholder engagement, will have the engagement functions, which span the industry, the governments, and our community. These engagement functions will be localized. So when we talk about an engagement center in Beijing, this is... These are the functions that will be here. So we can go to the stakeholders, to the government, to the uh, uh, industry, and bring them into, as uh, uh, Minister Bing said, bring them into the ICANN structures through our engagement capabilities. Now, a couple of notable things on this slide. Um, we have uh, announced yesterday, and that's thanks to a lot of bottom-up feedback I receive, that it is time for ICANN to get a chief technology officer. And we have announced the job on our website yesterday, and we will be adding this important role. Frankly, we have had uh, many years without a CTO at ICANN. 
and it's time we have a leader in that area that supports us and that job is now posted uh, and I hope uh, we will fill it by the time we get uh, to Durban. Um, we also have, uh, we'll be announcing tomorrow that we're bringing on board a new head of strategic communications. He will, uh, will report to Sally and he starts in mid-May and this will take the whole communications function and globalize it across the world. Uh, so very pleased to also announce this addition. Now, I didn't plan to show you the slides to just talk about people. I want to show you what we're doing to make the processes behind these structures much more scalable. So let me take an example. I'm going to focus a little bit on an area that's maybe a little bit important to many of you these days, the GTLD services area. So if I go into that department, one of the first things we did is to build a structure for the whole GTLD area, which we needed in order to serve all of you better. The first thing we did is to create a new DNS Industry Engagement Office, and we hired a new vice president, Cyrus Namazi, who's here with us today. And Cyrus uh, will be owning all the relationships with our uh, new GTLD uh, partners. Then in the middle, we built a service department, a service operations department that is obviously responsible for all the policy implementation and the service delivery to uh, the, the GTLDs. And finally, we're building a true proper support function that helps people come on board and supports them. Now, if I go in a little bit more detail inside uh, Christine Willett's operations area, we've broken that down into functional areas. Each of these areas have been defined. We have put behind each of these areas all the necessary processes, all the necessary tools so that we can make these areas scalable. So, for example, let me take transition to delegation as an example. When you go behind that, you can see all the details of how this area works, what are the processes, they're documented, they're repeatable, they're trackable, they're monitored. We're doing this across ICANN. That's what uh, I wanted to share with you on the area of structuring. So yes, it is our season to enable ICANN. And enabling ICANN is taking three things. First, our people, building a new culture, a culture that is agile, a culture that is adaptive, a culture that is global. Secondly, maturing our organization, as you saw, with the processes and the structure that allow us to scale it on a global level. And lastly, building the systems. Building the systems. Without these systems, the dream of three hubs is not going to be feasible. Because if a compliance person takes a case and then goes to sleep in Istanbul and then they, the, the, uh, the stakeholder calls the next morning and the time zone gets answered in Singapore, if they don't know what happened, if we don't have the systems to do that, it will not work. So we're deploying a true CRM system, a true trouble ticketing system. This is happening as we speak. Uh, we selected the system and it's being configured and deployed and we will finally have the ability for stakeholders to have their trouble tickets and their calls into ICANN logged and visible through my ICANN. And you will know the progress of your communications with us. That is all in motion right now. But as I note on this slide, this will take time. Right now, I want you to know that even though we started in Toronto, we're still halfway through this. And it will probably take us at the earliest, uh, later this year in Buenos Aires, to start getting to the point where our enablement is getting there so we can build a new ICANN, an ICANN that serves the world and is also scalable. It's also our season to engage. And many of you have followed my blogs, my travels, our team's activities around the world because we committed that we will go out to the world. We will not ask the world to come to ICANN. And this we had to do by action, not just by talking. So we went out and spent time around the world and many things have happened over the last six months. I'm going to touch on a few. The thing I'm frankly proudest of are the bottom-up regional strategies we have done. This to me 
is truly what ICANN is all about. So we started in Africa, if you remember, from the Prague meeting, and we built a team of people that encompasses all of the key stakeholders in Africa. And not only have they come up with a strategy that we presented to you in Toronto, they've been implementing it. I went to the first implementation in Addis Ababa. It was a workshop to help new registrars understand how to become good, scalable registrars. And there were 84 people, 85 people there spending days getting real support in growing and making the African community embrace the growing DNS sector. This is a success. And I want to thank, in front of all of us here, both uh, Pierre D'Angenoux, who has jumped right into this and made it happen, our Vice President for Stakeholder Engagement in Africa. And certainly, I want to thank uh, Dr. Tarek Kamel and Sally Kosterton for the great work that was done there. Where is Pierre? Where is Pierre? Is he here? If you're here, stand up. You deserve the thanks, Pierre. Thank